about photography. Oh yeah, photography. Um, this author, she's a well-known, um, she's a well-known lady, and this book has been awarded with National Book Critics Circle Award for criticism. Therefore, um, uh, it also became a best seller. Uh, Washington Post considers this volume a splendid analysis of the changes that photography generated in our way of looking to the world and looking at ourselves in the last 140 years. Um, this is the book. The book is written by Susan Sontag and it's called On Photography. It's a collection of essays uh, written by this author throughout her career and I found them fascinating. It's not an easy reading but <laughs> it's worth uh, trying. Susan Sontag is one of the most uh, influential cultural critics of modern America. She has been awarded so many times. Mm, lovely. In 1992, she received Malaparte Award in Italy. Mm, lovely. So she says in 1977, that everything started from one essay. Practically, this book uh, is a collection of essays written by the author um, about the significance and evolution of photography. Lovely. The first essay is called In the Cave, in Platon's Cave. In Platon's Cave. Um, um, it's a metaphor for humanity, which uh, sits in um, Platon's cave, uh, just feeding themselves with the images of the truth. Mm. Actually, uh, the photography managed to give this impression that we can um, we can grasp the entire uh, humankind in images. Uh, to collect photography, uh, it, it's um, about collecting the world. Quite lovely. Um, what is photography? Photography means that you are actually trying to place yourself in a relationship with the world. Mm, actually, um, the images are not declarations about the world, they're actually little pieces, fragments uh, from it. Mm. Quite lovely. Um, she talks about the usefulness of the camera, um, about the function of um, photography, about uh, a documentary like um, photography can be a tool and the camera can be a tool to document things and she gives the example of um, um, in uh, 1871 when the police in Paris um, started to make arrest and um, uh, the people were uh, like um, when photography was, it was used as surveillance for the people Mm. Uh, I'm not going to go really in the specifics because um, these essays are quite filled up with details about photography, about history. It's a very, very well documented um, writing of Susan Sontag. Uh, photography is also a form of art and also a social ritual, um, a way to defend ourselves in front of sadness and also an, an instrument of power. Uh, people can be manipulated through images, that's of course. Mm. Mm, she also mentions about the travelers 
hello uh, the travelers that um, have this habit of always taking pictures um, I've seen that quite often at people in vacations like people actually enjoy taking the photo more than the vacation itself mm, lovely and it's almost like um, yeah, it's almost like a surrogate for um, their working habits. A lot of people who are busy and they're taking a vacation, they feel like I'm not working, something is off. And then they use the camera. They use the camera uh, to pretend they are doing something in their vacation. Mm. Actually, photography um, is offering the illusion of participating. Mm. Quite interesting. Um, one of the things um, that is quite important in this is that once taken, an image is forever imprinted. Um, it's there, it's there and uh, therefore photography actually managed to capture small pieces of reality mm. and uh, also about ethics Susan Sontag uh, actually uh, um, describes some of the situations when a photographer was put to choose between photography and saving somebody's life um, some photographers choose photography. Uh, yeah, where where do we draw the boundaries in that? Mm. Um, she talks about um, she talks about uh, a photographer Diane Airbus, um, who was very passionate about uh, making pictures of deformed people of ugly people of uh, I don't know people who are seen as oddities and um, uh, there is a certain distance that the photographer has to have towards their subject um, um, but most of the photographies which were made and we, they were successful were successful because the photographer managed to have a sort of connection with their subject where do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line? Um, uh, it's a tool for the nostalgic people. Um, photography can allow you to go back in time. And some people really have this cult of being quite nostalgic after the past. Also, um, there is a thing about the beauty in the grotesque um, for a long time for a long time um, in photography uh, people took images of the pretty things but once um, uh, the technology and um, this became a form of art available for everybody uh, people started to take images of also the the grotesque and uh, quite a lot of people notice there is a beauty in the grotesque mm, quite interesting quite interesting mm. it's um it's a very filled uh, book it's uh this book is very filled with details from history um, she talks about um, um, the war from southern Vietnam uh, with a famous picture with a little boy um, while he's running on a, on a highway. Um, yeah. Also, she talks about discovering a series of photographies from Bergen, Belsen and Dachau. Dachau. Uh, she has found them in a library from Santa Monica in 1945 and uh, Susan Sontag um, recalls she was shocked. She was shocked um, seeing pictures, images, uh, illustrating horrors that happened um, really, really uh, shocked her and um, she says that I felt 
deeply uh, hurt but some of my feelings uh, got forged something died in me something is still crying once you start to see these kind of pictures you uh, you go on a slope to wanting to see more um, these images of the grotesque of the horror they just get you numb but after you're visualizing a lot of images of this type you start to get uh, you start to get less moved the event starts to seem less real as a proof as a proof uh, after so many years people are saturated uh, with pictures from concentration camps and um, it sounds harsh and it sounds brutal but uh, it's true hello hello it's true that um, actually yeah that's that's what it ha what that's what's happening that's what's happening mm. uh, photography photography assumes that we can know the world if we accept it the way the camera records it um, which is kind of a uh, of a like a thing that just doesn't make sense because uh, we have to, like, some photographers think that we don't have to take it as it is and we have to, uh, like, I'm, f I'm making a picture of this event to illustrate that I'm not approving it, but I'm making a picture. Therefore, why should we accept photography as a reality? Sometimes the photography doesn't want to illustrate the reality. Sometimes... Um, Sometimes nobody understands, <laughs> nobody understands anything from a photography. Um, so photography does not equal sometimes reality. Mm. The limitations, the limitations of um, knowledge of the world is that although photography can stimulate conscience, uh, consciousness cannot it cannot be ethical or political mm. uh, actually yeah and it's giving you the impression that the world is much more available than it really is it's true you see an image and you think about oh i can go and take a picture or oh that must have been easy to be caught on camera it's an illusion some of the photographies and uh, were very very hard to capture or they implied um, a lot of sacrifice from somebody therefore um, yeah it's it's I like this book because it's a philosophical approach of photography mm. and a quote that I loved our need to confirm our own reality and to intensify our experience through photography uh, represents an aesthetic consumerism that we're all addictive. Wow! Um, industrial societies transform their citizen in a toxico in a image toxicoma toxicoma is like addictive people it's the most irresistible form of mental pollution wow i'm so approving this a lot of people uh, developed this obsession of uh, photo of making a picture uh, of everything of everything <laughs> oh thank you thank you um and actually a lot of people are associating like if i'm going to this event if i'm going to this event i'm going to take a picture and there are so many pictures it's like mental pollution that's not good the next chapter the dark the dark America from photographies. Mm. So what's the dark side of America, I wonder? Um, she talks about the great cultural revolution from America. Um, about a lot of history in here. Uh, she talks about, for example, Edward Steinheil. 
in 1915 he made a photography of a bottle of milk on <laughs> On, uh, on an escape uh, stairs um, um, for um, a fire escape stairs um, yeah that it's like photography starts to experiment with concepts it's not only about reality it's not only about uh, what's in front of me a picture of a bottle of milk <laughs> can become a photography Mm, lovely to make a picture to make a picture means to give importance to something so if I'm making a picture uh, it must be important but for who is it important is it important um, because the subject is important is it important because me as a photographer I take a picture um, interesting interesting uh, she talks about Alfred Stieglitz, about um, Walker Evans. These are well-known photographers. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, Walker Evans. He was the last great photographer who worked consistently um, on, Whitna on Whitman's um, um, euphorical humanism. Oh, uh, I'm getting so complicated in here, but let me tell you, this photographer made a series of pictures of the people who traveled with the uh, in the um, in the New York subways, but he did them uh, with a pocket camera, and he was like. Um, um, hiding the camera. He uh, managed to make pictures of the people who traveled um, like this but without even giving them a clue they're being photographed. Um, these were kind of interesting pictures because people behave differently when they notice that you're taking a picture. Mm. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. Of course, she always um, she also mentions uh, Diane Arbas. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, she was very often mentioned in this book. Um, she took photographies of ugly people with ugly clothes in a quite desolate decor. Um, all right, yeah. Mm. Um, the images taken by this woman, Diane Arbas, uh, looks, um, she shows uh, like pathetic people, um, really um, kind of, the kind of people you would reject. <laughs> They're so like repulsive. Um, but without searching for compassion, without searching for compassion, uh, actually this photographer made this kind of a series just because she wanted to show there is a different world. Not everybody is pretty. Not The, the, the world is not filled with beauty. We also have the grotesque. Can we discover something in the grotesque as well? Mm. Um. Mm. A question, a question. Did the people in the photography of this author, uh, Diane Arbas, like when an ugly, it's gonna sound bad what I'm going to tell, but if an ugly person or if a, uh, if they're being photographed, are they seeing themselves how we, how we see them? Is that uh, uh, just just let that sink in? A wonder. It's like, do they actually know how they look? Do they perceive their ugliness the way we perceive them? Mm. Interesting. Um, she had to be friends with this kind of people in order to make a successful uh, photography. So uh, it wasn't like, okay, uh, I'm called Diane and I'm going to take your picture. No, the success behind these kind of pictures is uh, because um, it's um, 
it's because the photographer was a friend with the subject uh, therefore the subject starts to feel much more relaxed in front of the camera and you can see that you can see that in the images mm. uh, unfortunately Diane Arbus she committed suicide I'm um, a lot of people don't know if uh, um, because of the troubling images she made throughout her career the fact that she has known uh, a lot of um, disturbed people and she took photos of those kind of people and if that impacted her to such an extent that she she did that but uh, it shows that uh, being a photographer and uh, adventuring in um, quite forbidden territories can be uh, actually dangerous you know mm. Um, Susan Sontag says that uh, looking back in time, um, the, the words of uh, Airbus describe uh, uh, death like she, she actually was the victim of a mental ambush, a victim of her own curiosity. Hmm, I can agree with that. If you're so curious as a photographer and you go and take pictures of people that are really troubling you mentally, um, that can affect you long term. Mm. And I agree with this. In the old myth of the artist, whoever has the courage to uh, to spend one season in the infern in the inferno, a risk to never come out alive or to return uh, mentally um, um, mentally damaged. I can agree. I think that most of the photographers who experienced horror, who experienced violence, they they were mentally challenged afterwards. Mm. There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay in our capacity of digesting this grotesque of the images. Um, um, if people watch for a long time, if people look at, look for a long time at pictures of the grotesque, they become immune. They're no longer moved by the suffering. That's quite troubling. Um, uh, the camera the camera acts like a passport like if i'm a photographer i have this little thing called the camera it almost uh, gives me like a permit to go wherever i want to go to make any picture that i want to do um it's quite fascinating quite fascinating um no yeah. um uh, a little off topic of photography, again, uh, Susan Sontan goes into the personal story of this photographer, Diane Arbus, and she talks that she came from a Jewish family who was wealthy, educated, obsessed with mental um, normality. And actually, this photographer, Diane, she grew in an environment overly safe, overly protected, Maybe that's why she has chosen a career in making photos of the of the of the grotesque, of the odd people, of the weird people. Of uh, yeah, maybe she wanted. She says that maybe she wanted to uh, release herself from the frustration of always being safe. Mm look look how your childhood can influencing can influence you in picking a career um, a career that would expose you to the things that your family tried to keep you out of them interesting interesting mm. quite lovely um Of course, again, she talks about Susan Tons. Um... <laughs> oh, okay, you have time. You have the time to think about that. Um... So there is a shift. 
there is a shift in photography. Actually, if at the beginning, people thought that photography can be uh, like, can aspire to transcend to beauty. And um, actually, it has been discovered that photography can aspire to, uh, to this current called super realism. Mm, quite lovely. The next chapter, I am selling originals uh, in my art on my Etsy shop, my original drawings. Um, the next chapter is the objects of melancholy, of uh, yam, of melancholy yam. Um, Susan Sontag starts to talk about art, about painting um, and um, actually uh, the first like a disadvantage um, in regards to painting was that um, every object was unique every object has to be over realistically painted at the beginning of art at the beginning of painting uh, most of the artists were super realists like okay I have this book and I have to paint it so realistically uh, photography photography was of a great help um, because they managed to uh, take this pressure off of artists mm quite lovely uh, and I love this quote photography is the art that showed that you can put a sewing machine and an umbrella next to each other and uh, they can express extreme beauty mm. <laughs> lovely 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 it's a form of art it's a form of art uh, therefore uh, not only a painting and a drawing can go and uh, dwell into this area, photographers can also approach artistic subjects. Mm. Um, a source, a source for uh, great images, although it sounds bad, <laughs> It's poverty, poverty. Photography has been fascinated by uh, the depths of um, social, um, of social differences. Um, for over a century, photographers followed the oppressed and they recorded scenes of violence from wars, from um, civil um, battles. Mm. Poverty uh, allowed the, the <laughs> those who could who could afford to start as a photographer to um, to document the things. Mm. So the rich people started to get fascinated by the poor people, and they wanted to make pictures. Oh, why? Yeah. So it's a documentary. It's like. The, the function of a camera uh, can act like um, like a documentary style kind of device. I have this and you are struggling or you are uh, living in the slums of I don't know what city and I'm coming and I'm going to take you a picture and that's uh, that's um, that's going to last in history and it gives you this power. There is a lot of power when you're having a camera. Mm. In the 80s, 80, 1880, uh, Thompson, uh, John Thompson, a British photographer, started to, it was the first one who um, made um, uh, port interior portraits for the houses. Hmm, lovely, lovely. Um, it's quite difficult to give you like uh, a condensed uh, version of this essays because a uh, Susan Sontag is such a good writer. She goes from history to art 
to ethics to like she she goes through all of this concept and I it's quite lovely to uh, follow her pattern of thinking quite quite interesting mm. In 1911, another photographer, uh, August Sander, started to make a um, photographic catalog of the German people. Mm. Um, that was interesting. <laughs> um, he, he just made uh, classical portraits. Hello, hello. Uh, of course, the Nazis, uh, the Nazis made sure that August Sanders, um, all of those images uh, get uh, like they would get burned and lost. Um, they thought that Sanders' project to make uh, pictures of the German people was antisocial. Oh wow! <laughs> Imagine living in those times. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> Very interesting. Uh, Sandro didn't know that he was taking pictures of a world about to be extinct. Um, he also was aware that there is no um salvation from the, for the world he was documenting that's regarding to um another photographer uh, clark roman uh, who made pictures of the indians from arizona and new mexico um <laughs> you're going you're going to laugh in a very funny way when i'm going to tell you something that in 1942 uh, uh, in the World War II, um, actually, <laughs> poor people, uh, uh, making pictures of the poor people, um, started to be uh, too uh, depressing, too depressing, and <laughs> actually photographers were like summoned, like, stop make, taking pictures of the poor people, it's too depressing, we no longer need that, we need pictures of the men and of the women of, and of the children that seem to really believe in the USA. Oh God, we need uh, pictures with, uh, <laughs> with women in their kitchens or in their yard picking up flowers. Oh, that's manipulating the reality. That's, this is a danger in photography like, oh no more uh, no more pictures with the poor too depressing oh god mm. Mm. a big impact and i'm pretty sure a lot of people uh maybe maybe uh, have found uh these pictures it's about the pictures made by lewis hein um he was uh, named um uh, a photographer for the National Committee for Child Labor and his photography with children who worked in the manufact of cut in the cotton manufactories on uh, beetroot fields and or in the mines actually influenced um, uh, the laws of giving a law um, who would protect kids from working Oh, I, I know the pictures of Lewis Hein. Um, if you're Googling that, the images are so shocking. Like you can see kids working in factories. Like, wow, Whew, that was tough. That was tough. At the beginning of photography, Kodak, <laughs> the well-known um, uh, brand, Kodak um, had um, had a habit of putting signs at the entrance of many cities, uh, actually telling you what's worth uh, taking a picture of. Wow, that's that's so funny. That's so funny. Mm. Oh, yeah, I ship only in Europe. I don't know how much 
um, if you're from United States, I don't know how much is the shipping. I would probably consider it, but you'll have like to let me know because um, I'll have to do some researching to know how much does it cost and maybe we can work it out. That's why I've put it. I, I have no experience in shipping outside uh, Europe. Yeah, but I would be open to that. Um, yeah. uh, she also talk. Uh, she also talks about old pictures. We people have a a, a thing, a thing for old pictures. Um, looking at an old picture is an emotional process. We all. What do you think when you look at an older picture of you? What do you think? Oh, I was so young back then. <laughs> so actually photography allows you to become emotional. Is almost uh, she. Um, it makes an inventory of uh, mortality. Oh, wow, yo, that's true. That's true. Mm. Uh, she talks about a lot of people who made pictures during the war, during economical crisis, illustrating how societies are. Let's make a parallel with this COVID thing. A lot of photographers made sure they captured this on the camera. Mm. Right, 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 right. Uh, just uh, like a collector, the photographer is animated of um, is being fueled by a passion uh, which is connected to a sense of the past, to the sense of the past. Mm. Um, she talks about the people who took images of old buildings, old places, old people. This fascination that we have for the past is quite interesting and um, actually photography is a process of uh, making reality antique the sooner like the minute you pressed click the moment has passed it's already in the past although you made the picture in the present so actually in their essence photography pictures are Instant antiquities, antiquities like it's instant past. Fascinating, it's so true, it's so true. Um, um, the unpredictability of photography confirms that everything, everything is just, it's not, everything is temporary. Um, the reality, we cannot classify reality because real, reality is unpredictable and we can't see everything behind an image, behind an image. Mm. Lovely, lovely. And uh, an interesting idea. Uh, the world of pictures um, has the same fundamental uh, relationship which is wrong with the real world just like movies has with the frames. Um, life isn't about the details. Life isn't about the details which you capture with um, a camera, uh, but photographies are. Um, photography gives us this sensation that we know the world and that uh, we accept it the way we are. Um, the way images uh, are multiplied, it's actually an affirmation of kitsch. I agree. So many images, so many like, uh, let's take a picture of this, let's take a picture of that, let's take... It's kitsch. So many images are like, it's kitsch, it's kitsch. Mm. 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 And, um, see, that's why I loved this book. Susan Santag looks at photography at photography from a philosophical point of view. Um, Marx 
um, you know Marx, of course you do. Um, he actually um, said that philosophy is only trying to understand the world instead of changing it. That was like a critique towards philosophy. But Susan Sontag says that photography, uh, photographers um, um, actually, uh, they're, they're like, they're, how could I explain this? It's so complicated. But photographies, uh, photographers uh, let us know that um, just understanding the world, just trying to understand the world would be like so vain and therefore their their suggestion is for us to collect the world it's like uh, yeah just let's make pictures let's let's not try to understand because we can never understand but let's take pictures 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 and it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense why why collect why collect the world instead of trying to understand it mm. The next chapter, the uh, the the heroism, the heroic nature behind a vision, the heroic nature of vision of having a vision. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> I love this quote. Nobody discovered the ugly through uh, photography, but a lot of people discovered beauty through it. Mm. What determines people to take an image? It's finding the beauty. Finding beauty. People like beauty, like beautiful things. Uh, somebody is considered attractive if they look pretty in a picture. And um, yeah, taking images uh, is actually trying to create beauty. And after after generations, that thing um, is um, is overused. Mm. Um, Fox Talbot uh, at the middle of the forties, um, he is the first one who invented the. Uh, doing a retouch on negatives <laughs> oh yeah thank you <laughs> thank you um as seen on uh, on my screen as pretty on my screen <laughs> um actually when people started to discover that uh, we we can manipulate images and make them look prettier uh, that's when photography and the camera became even more popular like when people were like oh i can i can make myself look even prettier oh i want a camera <laughs> so this is how photography went mass market mm. beautiful beautiful Mm. Right. Um, there is this cult of beautiful, of beauty, uh, which is very perpetrated by photographers. Alfred Stieglitz um, t uh, tells that he spent three hours in the middle of a blizzard in twenty in twenty uh, twenty two February eighteen ninety three. To, um, to make a famous picture, to make the perfect picture. Mm. So what don't like what people don't do for capturing beauty, for capturing what they want. All oh, right, all right, right, right. Mm, beautiful. Um, there is there is a bridge. There is a bridge between art and science. Uh, which was done through photography, art and science. There is a science behind making a camera and the camera captures uh, beauty, a form of art or grotesque or anything, a form of art. Science plus art equal photography. Mm. Beautiful. I agree very much with one particular ad idea from this book. I I agree with this, and Susan T Sontag tells tells it like this. 
um, by taking um, taking the responsibility of a realistic interpretation, um, which was the task of the art, photography allowed the, uh, the art, the traditional art, painting, drawing, the freedom of fulfilling their true potential, their, uh, their vocation, which is abstract, abstract. When photographers started to like, of course, how much does it take to a painter to uh, paint this in a realistic way? And how much uh, is it for a photographer to take a picture of this? Therefore, artists started like, okay, if photography is going to realistically represent a picture, then I can do my abstract art. And that was a huge thing. Uh, a huge thing at that time, at that time when uh, super realistic painters were so appreciated for for painting the way they did, but when the camera appeared, it was like, hmm, interesting, hmm, interesting. Uh, another beautiful quote from this book. Um, and Susan Sontag tells that one of the uh, long-lasting successes of photography was the strategy of transforming living creatures into things and things into living creatures. Uh, she makes, um, uh, you have to google this, she makes um, reference to the peppers that Weston took pictures of. Mm. <laughs> oh really that's that's a lovely one <clears throat> but it's big it's big it's a pretty big uh it's i don't know how uh how much it would cost to ship it i don't know i have to i have to see <laughs> how much would that be because it's it's painted on a frame i don't know if i can take like the canvas off the frame and just ship you like the canvas or I would have to wrap the whole big painting and ship it to you. Mm, I'll have to do some research. <laughs> but do message me on Etsy, okay? So let's continue to this book. Um, uh, taking pictures of, uh, of things like uh, a pepper or uh, a flower or uh, a pencil can become a form of art can can bring life into a lifeless object mm, beautiful beautiful I actually love this kind of pictures uh, and this kind of images that take mundane objects and see the beauty in the shape Mm. She again talks about well-known uh, photographers Ansel Adams, Weston, Cartier-Bresson. I'm not going to go into details. Um, another success of photography is discovering beauty, discovering beauty in what is uh, lifeless, in what is decayed. Uh, for example, the beauty of the poor people <laughs> it sounds ho so horribly when i say it but there is a beauty in poverty there is a beauty in looking how happy some of those people are even they even if they are poor there is a beauty in that there is a beauty mm. um therefore therefore <laughs> Therefore, it's it's you know what's beautiful in that is the uh, is the beauty of simplicity. There, uh, and you see a lot of simplicity in in that because they don't have much, and if they don't have much, you have to work with what they have, and what they have it's so simple and simplicity it's so beautiful. That's the meaning behind the beauty of the poor people. Just to get that straight. <laughs> Um, photography, photography served to extend the notion of uh, beauty, 
of beauty. It's um, a, a lot of years uh, people didn't saw beauty in poverty, didn't saw beauty in the grotesque. Photography with uh, with the cameras, with the negatives, with um, retouching managed to extend to broaden the uh, the area uh, which we perceive as beauty, beautiful. Mm. Right. Ah, it's it's a beautiful. It's this is a book so complex that I have to get over a lot of history. Um, because it would take forever, it would take forever. But if you're interested in history, um, this book is for you. <clears throat> uh, the camera, the camera acts like um, a device that makes uh, the experience uh, as seen in miniature. It transforms a history in a spectacle. Mm, beautiful. It creates a sort of a distance towards the emotion itself. Um, the realism behind a photography gives birth to a confusion about reality, a confusion that can act like a numbness, like it numbs you, but it also washes the eye. <laughs> See, it's it's a philosophical look over what uh, what an image does to you. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. The highest, the highest vocation of photography is to is to explain uh, a human for another human. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, and just as uh, Diane Arbus said, a photography is a secret about another secret. Oh, hello, hello. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. So, so beautiful. The next chapter. Hello, I'm very, very good. I'm very, very good. I'm, I'm just digging into this book and it's lovely. The next chapter is about, uh, how could we say, it's like, how could I translate it? Like the scriptures of photography, like something like that. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Uh, a quote by uh, um, Minor White, the, the, the mood of the photographer when he creates, it's, when he creates, it's like a void. Um, when a photographer looks at its own pictures, he projects himself in what he sees. Mmm, lovely. And a quote by, a quote by uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson. Um, um, the process of thinking should happen before and after, but never while you take a photography. So, the secret is to think about composition, to think about the message, to think before to think about all of the things you want to convey before and after, but never in the moment, never in the moment. Uh, and Ansel Adams says that a photography, it's not an accident, it's a concept. It's a concept. I agree with that. Um, but there is also a valid point in, um, in uh, recognizing the fact that a lot of photography, success, successful photographies were taken by pure luck. Uh, how, how, much, how much concept is behind pure luck, behind being at the right time, in the right moment, with the right camera, with the right settings, doing the right picture. Uh, so yeah, mm, that's interesting. Mm. She talks a, a lot about Stieglitz, about Ansel Adams, 
uh, about what they think about photography. Um, I do agree that it's a manifestation of the personal self. I put something from me when I'm taking a picture, whether do whether I admit it or not. You can see it's like just an art, just in a painting. I put something of me in that art, whether I admit it or not. A part of my soul <laughs> is captured in that very moment. Mm. So you, we can't pretend that photography is actually uh, a void of feelings, void of influence. Uh, the photographer has a sort of influence over the images. Mm. Uh, therefore, and I agree with uh, Susan Sontag on this one, uh, the um, photographic realism can and it is more and more defined not as, not like what's true, but what I perceive as being true. So true. <laughs> so, so true. Um, reality actually needs a sort of um, selection method. What's real? What's, what's, what's real? What's real? What's, what's reality? What is reality is perception. Reality is perception. Hmm, lovely. Um, the realists in photography, um, actually they are convinced that reality is hidden. Therefore, uh, the role of the photographer is to reveal it, to reveal the reality hidden. Mm, quite interesting, quite interesting. And a lovely quote, a lovely quote that a photographic landscape, a photographical landscape, it's actually inner landscape. <gasps> wow, it's like so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing a lot of fantasy makeup. You can see that on my Hive blog. I have a blog on Hive and you can check it out more there. Um, therefore, when a, a, a photographer takes a picture, when he takes a picture of a landscape of something, uh, there is also a photography, the, the unseen picture of their inner self when they are taking that image. Beautiful beautiful. Ansel Adams said that we are not making a picture, we are creating one. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. There is a lot of talk about uh, similarities of the similarities of photography with art. Mm, there is a form of art that's true that's true mm. uh, there was a long debate um, around this topic a lot of people did not approve photography as being art but when they stopped debating it it's like is photography an art is it not an art what is it um, actually when they stopped debating the matter photography was accepted as art and she uh, and it uh, she entered into museums mm. beautiful beautiful mm. again a lot of facts about history about um <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, a lot of details about different photographers. Um, um, how about language? How about language? It's like uh, uh, photography, does it need words? Does an image need words? Mm. Beautiful. And I agree with that. If pictures... <laughs> Yeah, um, um, if pictures are given enough time, uh, a lot of pictures and photographies are having like a sort of an aura, 
yeah the nostalgic vibe it's like look at that picture that's so old that's so nice mm. and um uh, all of, uh, and Susan Sontag says that uh, poetry, for example, poetry do not become the, they don't become better or more attractive just because they're old. But uh, all photographies are, are interesting and emotional if they're old enough. Correct. Time, time can influence our emotional attachment to things. Photography at its core beautiful um <clears throat> there is a very valid point that susan sontag makes that um from delacroix to turner to picasso um everybody used uh pictures images as uh as a visual help but nobody nobody expects a photographer to get a little help from um, art and painting. Therefore, photography encapsulates art in itself. Wow, beautiful. That's so true. Um, although it, it's not a form of art, maybe it's not a form of art photography, it's more like uh, a science and art, but photography has this capacity to transform all of its subjects into a form of art yeah i can like i can take anything a book a clipper uh, a strand of hair and make a picture and transform it into art that's the quality of photography mm. the next the next chapter it's called uh, the image world uh, like the world seen as an image Mm. Reality has always been interpreted through images. Um, that's true. That's true because images. Um, yes, exactly. You you nailed this. Exact performing art. That's so good. That's good. Exactly. You're so right. Um, images have a sort of authority. Um, uh, an image can can change things. Images can be powerful. Let's get back to Lewis Hine, who made pictures of kids working in factories, and therefore those images had such a power that there has been a laws given to um, <clears throat> forbid kids to work. Uh, in a uh, to work, yeah, exactly. We talk through emotions. Um, right, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. A photography is part of the subject, it's an extension of, yeah, exactly. It's an extension of the subject and a way to uh, capture it and to control your subject. Photography is a sort of an acquisition, an acquisition of an emotion, an acquisition of the subject, an acquisition of the moment. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> a very interesting thing, and I didn't know that, and I must admit I laughed, but I felt bad after I laughed, but... Uh, Susan Sontag uh, reveals us that people from primitive community, like from tribes, they are afraid of the camera because they think that the camera can steal a part of their being. <laughs> okay, laugh a little, but after that, I, I analyzed it and it does, it does take a bit of you in that little moment, it does take a little you, but on a metaphorical level. Uh, another photographer, yeah, we try, we try to connect and we try to understand. We try to understand exactly. I think photography is is a way of us trying to understand what's around us. Exactly, it takes a little of us on a metaphorical uh, a level, and this can explain why photography has something magical in it. For example, we we don't 
very rarely do we break or do we throw people of someone we loved especially of somebody who no longer lives or who is far away because we perceive it as a rejection think about think about i never <laughs> i never had the courage to like to split or to to break pictures of of past loves it, it feels something something can you see like it's like you're you're breaking a part of you it's it's funny but this is the power of photography uh, the reality yes exactly exactly oh yeah that's so beautiful oh you're god you're god Mm, beautiful. Uh, the collection of pictures are being used to create um, another world, another world, um, um, another world that could interpret, that could heal, that could... We are creating different worlds. We are creating... Um, we are creating sometimes what we want to see through photography. Mm. It's a way to actually to imprison reality. Sure, have a good time. Bye. Thank you for stopping by. It's actually a, a way to immobilize the reality. See you next time. Bye bye. And it's quite fascinating. It's quite fascinating. We are trying to capture, to grasp reality, to incarcerate it, and then to understand it. But we are trapped because we can't release it. We can't release it. Sure, sure, sure. I'll check it out after my stream. Bye bye, bye bye. So beautiful. So beautiful. And. I agree so much with something that Susan Sontag told about um, images and about this art. Uh, it's not the reality which is very accessible through photography, it's the images. Wow, think about that. We're not accessing reality. Can you really know what that person thought in that very minute in that picture? Can you really know what they felt? Is their reality accessible to you? It's not. It's their image. It's their image that you talk, creating your mini reality about their reality. But their reality, like if you take a picture of me now, what do you truly take? Do you have access to my reality? No, you don't. You have an access to an image of me, but that's that's the thing about photography. It it conveys something that we want to see, but not necessarily what it is. Quite a significant difference, and I love Susan Sontag for making the specific, um, the specific uh, observation. Yeah, lovely. Uh, <laughs> there is a thing that when everybody is making their selfie or their portrait now, the the true uh, no, noblesse um, is that um, yours <laughs> should not exist. It's like if you really want to get yourself out of this, don't don't take your portrait because it's like everybody has a portrait. Now. <laughs> it's like yeah, I don't. It's like those kind of people like. I don't want any any of my picture I don't want because it's like it's so saturated it's so saturated so saturated and it's also something narcissistical narcissistic about photography um, it is a very powerful tool to um, depersonalize our relationship with the world it's true it's true it's true in the real world uh, something is happening and nobody knows what's next in the image world in the in the world created uh, through a photography something did happen and something will happen do you spot like the difference mm, beautiful and i can agree with this knowing a big part of the world through photography art 
uh, natural beauty, um, uh, catastrophe wars. People are frequently disappointed, surprised or uh, indifferent when they see the real deal. Mm. <laughs> I've, uh, I've talked with somebody who visited like the concentration camps and everything and there's there's a thing like what you see in the pictures and what you actually feel when you're there see this is the illusion of photography it's it tells you something an emotion something that you feel right there when you see the image but you can catch yourself having such complete different perception when you face the reality like you see a picture of somebody and it's like mm, I think they look like oh, nah. and then maybe you actually meet them and your perception changes beautiful beautiful and interesting this is a very interesting book um, very interesting book and I love it because um, it, it shows a, a different way to look at this form of art at this form of art um, she also makes a comparison between the culture of photography in china and in america uh, it's quite it's quite um complex i won't go into that but the chinese are focused on hiding what they have to hide <laughs> yeah hmm. interesting um um and slowly we're going so this this collection of essays started from history from uh, the beginning of the of inventing the camera and everything and now uh, uh, like almost to the end uh, we talk about the capital like the capitalist uh, society that um, we we are living in a culture of images this this society that we have now has to um, has to give uh, big quantities of entertainment to uh, to stimulate the appetite for buying and for for numbing the trauma of class race and sex mm. very interesting the freedom oh and i will say this so slow because it's so much truth in this in this sentence the freedom to consume a lot of images and goods uh, it's equivalent with the freedom itself and that is the biggest mistake of the capitalistic society just because we're free to consume doesn't mean we are free oh that's so good mm, that's so good so so good actually the need the need to take a picture the need to to have so many images now it's because of this consumption uh to consume means to burn to to uh, exhaust to refuel therefore as we make and consume new images we need more 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 mm. <laughs> and this was this was interesting but i loved it to possess to have a, a camera can inspire a feeling which is related to um to lust to yeah you have a camera and like oh, i'm gonna take that i'm gonna take that and where does it stop where does it stop we consume images for for so like we are in a fast food image society the cameras, and I, I, I agree with Susan Sontag on this, the camera is the antidote and the disease, uh, a, a way of assuming reality and to transform it. Yeah, when does it stop? When does it stop? When does it stop? When does it stop, yeah. Hmm. Actually, there... Susan, uh, we need, and uh, connected to what you said, it never stops. We need an uh, an ecology, of not only of the real things but of the images. We need somebody to, to clean all of this, all of this mass, all of this mass. 
um, there is a power in the images because we uh, they are like material a form of material reality it's it, it's imprinted therefore it exists but that's not always the case because photography can be manipulated now I can I can uh, like put myself next to I don't know Obama in Photoshop but that doesn't mean I actually met Obama uh, but actually uh, they have this power to inverse reality just because uh, they transform it into a shade. Uh, images uh, are becoming more real than than you could ever imagine. Mm, so we need we need to stop this disease of the images. Um, this is, I love the fact that Susan Sontag has chosen to end this with uh, an anthology of quotes. I love this. Quotes about photography, uh, quotes about this form of art. And there are so many quotes. Um, and I picked some of them, which I really liked. Um, your photography is a recording of your life for anybody um, able to really see. Beautiful. That's a quote from Paul Strand. Um, People are always, uh, always an uh, anxious to see everybody who uh, transformed into somebody famous. Photography offers the most complete satisfaction to our curiosity. Schopenhauer, yes, this curiosity, this, this like voyeur kind of um, feeling that photography sparks like I can sneak peek in somebody's life and their own mm. Mm. if I could say a story in words then I shouldn't have to carry after me a camera Lewis Hine Beautiful. This was the guy who made the pictures of the kids working in factories. Sometimes, and I agree so much, sometimes words are so very unnecessary um, uh, because they cannot convey um, something which can be seen through an image. There is a power of the image of saying a story like words could never tell. I, I give that. Mm. I, make, I, I make a picture of what I don't want to paint and I paint what I can't make a picture of. Man Ray. Mm. <laughs> Uh, a photography camera can be made to lie only with great efforts. In principle, it is a very honest uh, medium. Edward S. Weston. <clears throat> uh, another quote by Clarence John Laughlin. Um, uh, the creative photographer found a way to release the human content from objects and it humanizes the inhumane world around it wow. yeah um, uh, it goes back to that idea that you can take a lifeless object like I don't know this for example and make like a picture in a way that it conveys more than it is mm, yeah, beautiful Another quote from a very well-known photographer, I'm not sure if you're familiar, Richard Avedon, he made a lot of awesome portraits. Um, and this is the quote, I always prefer to work in a studio. It isolates people from their environment. In a way, they become emblematic for themselves. Wow. Time stops. We share a short, intense moment of intimacy, uh, but it's not deserved. It has no past. It has no future. And when the session is over, when the photography is made, it's nothing left be besides that. 
wow photography have a, a, a reality for me that people don't through photography i know people just because this fact is part of the nature of being a photographer i'm not ever fully involved richard avedon wow <laughs> mm, lovely lovely quite lovely um a very poetic quote uh, life in itself it's not reality we are the ones who put life into rocks and into places frederick sommer mm, lovely the need to bring uh, things closer it's almost an obsession today there is a, like a sort of uh, an obsession to reproduce the object in first uh, in you're like uh, the closer the closer the closer walter benjamin mm, right 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 and a quote by Diane Arbas, the photographer who made pictures of the grotesque people. If I would just be curious, it would be very hard to tell somebody, hey, I want to come out to your place to, uh, to talk with you and to tell me your life story. <laughs> people will say you're crazy, but the, the camera is a sort of a permit. Uh, a lot of people want to be given that sort of attention and the attention uh, from a camera is common good sense yeah you can't you can't approach a person telling hey i'm a photographer i want to talk to you and really get to know the depths of your soul <laughs> yeah no, no, that's not gonna work mm. Photography, and this is so, so beautiful. Uh, the photography is the only language which is understood in every corner of the world. And it brings out nations and cultures and it unifies the family of human. Beautiful. This is Helmut Garnstein, uh, a quote from him. Mm. This will make you laugh. This is a quote from Edward Aston, Weston. Uh, this is the guy who made pictures of uh, green peppers look so erotic. Just Google that. Um, this is the quote. <laughs> I made a picture of our toilet <laughs> and uh, th there is an exquisite beauty. <laughs> Uh, you can find every sensual uh, curve of this divine human silhouette, but with no imperfections. <laughs> Actually, the toilet, uh, yeah, it's like white, it's shiny, it has those curves. I'm pretty sure a skilled photographer can make uh, the toilet look very artistic. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Mmm. This was my favorite, favorite quote. Uh, people uh, keep on, um, people continue to kill between themselves, but they haven't understood how they're living, why they are living. Politicians do not understand that the earth is an entity, although television was invented. Tomorrow, we will be able to look into the souls of the others we will be everywhere but will be alone wow this is the quote belonging to laszlo moholy nagi so true we have this culture now we can look at so many pictures on instagram on everybody like people selling us a uh, part of their inner souls but Actually, I think I think there's a lot of solitude and a lot of loneliness and yeah, we will be everywhere in pictures, but we'll be alone. That's so powerful. Mm. Another quote from George Tice. 
um, you can only see what you're prepared to see, what your mind mirrors at a certain a specific time. Mm, true, true, true. The camera is a way, it's a fluid way to meet the other reality. Oh, Jerry Yulsman. Mm. <laughs> and I'm laughing about this, but it's not funny. But I'm laughing just because I find it ridiculous, ridiculously true, and it's some, it, 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 it appalls me. And I, I don't know if you, you should laugh, you should cry, you should be shocked, you should be accepting. Let me give you the quote. Um, Austrian Poland. Uh, after almost 30 years uh, from uh, closing the concentration camp from Auschwitz, the horror of the place seems diminished by the stands with souvenirs, Coca-Cola logos and a very touristic vibe. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is so true. Mm. Um, Mino White. Uh, I always uh, take a picture mentally as a form of exercise. Yeah. It's actually true. I find it... Can you imagine that a Coca-Cola stand or those souvenirs? Like, oh, what's under that soil? What kind of an energy has been there? Uh, I don't know. It's, this is a long debate. I'm not going to go into that. Another quote, a Wallace Stevens, um, the majority of modern uh, people who um, uh, actually re reproduced uh, life, including um, the camera, they rejected. We actually, <laughs> we, uh, we consume evil, but we choke with good. Wow, we consume evil and bad things and grotesque, but we choke with the good. Mm. So true, so true. This is quote by Wallace Stevens. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Um, another quote from Conversations with Kafka from Gustav Janok. Janok. Uh, and it, it's exactly what I said that um, they have a talk about in the 1921 to you know those instant take your photo kind of devices were installed in Prague um, and actually um, this guy told to Kafka like look at that this uh, sort of camera is like get to know yourself and Kafka replied no this is get uh, uh, be wrong about yourself and like why and just because we can't see reality with even the strongest objective even with the highest expansive lens we uh, these machines these kind of machines who just take instant snapshots of you they are not multiplying the eyes of people they only offer a fantastically simplified panoramic view Ah, exactly what I told you. You can take 10 pictures of me. on. That doesn't mean you know the reality. That doesn't mean you have a complex view of who that person is. Very, very important. It doesn't mean like the more pictures you take, the more you know. You're actually moving further. Mm. Um, there is an essay at the end of the book. It's called The Process of Pictures. It's written by Erwin Kessler. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. Let me tell you. Um, um, it's a sort of an interpretation of what Susan Sontag wrote and an addenda to what she said. Um, uh, this guy says that without photography, our world, our the the world which is is now, it's unconceivable. Uh, long before <laughs> it over <laughs> it overcomes the 
the petrol industry, the cereal industry, the production of photographer of photographic images exceeds the industry of the oil just because 380 billion pictures are being produced annually. Wow! Uh, 20, the 22nd uh, uh, century will be in pictures or it won't be at all. Huh, that's a dangerous path to go in. If it's not on the pictures, it's not, it's not real. Mm. Um, the, pho the photographic air, it just blows in your eyes. I so agree with this. The, actually, it compromises the reality. Photography uh, now uh, has ended up in compromising reality. It seems like a faded, a faded uh, look of reality. Mm. In the United States, huh, in the United States, for example, in the majority of households, you can find between 5 and 15, 15 devices of uh, making pictures. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Um, in 20. 13 um, uh, the camera uh, the the market for uh, DSLRs dropped by uh, 40% but the uh, but the market for uh, cameras which are incorporated like in the webcam in laptop in in uh, phones has increased has increased by 40% Ooh, wow and I loved this new term and I believe that we can describe a lot of people by this term and this belongs to uh, to this guy Erwin Kessler huh. every almost every person that possesses an electronic device um, with a camera is a homo photograph photographiator homo photographiator um, so yeah it's like we have a lot of people making a lot of photos it's like it's no more homo sapiens it's homo photographiator um, yeah uh, this guy admits that he's not into photography he doesn't even have a family album. He doesn't uh, have his kids' photos on his phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the only picture that he has is a the old picture of his mother. Of his mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he looks at the camera as being like a sort of uh, an uh, obstacle in front of the eyes. Uh, a deviation in front of reality. Mm. Indeed, that is true. That is true. Um, being an eyewitness, so eyewitness, I see, I see what? I see what my eyes see and what do my eyes see? They see an image. And being an eyewitness uh, to uh, something, they attract, that attracts not only responsibility but a lot of power. The possibility to be seen, the possibility to be remembered, the possibility to articulate a vision that can save or condemn somebody. Wow. Hmm. No wonder that the volume of scientific research dedicated to perception and to visual uh, memory uh, overcomes one by 100% the volume of uh, research with uh, concerning another type of memory. So visual memory has been studied 100 times more than any other type of memory because we are visual creatures. I see, I want, I react. Mm, very interesting, very interesting. Again, in 2011 at a global scale, the, industri the industry of uh, ocular prosthetics 
uh, <laughs> do you know, do you want to know the numbers? Uh, 81 billion dollars and for 2018 it will estimate it will overcome uh, 130 billion dollars. That's quite an industry. Mm, the biggest contribution are eyeglasses and eyewear. Mm. Beautiful photography and he makes this comparison that photography it's like a prosthetic which uh, which makes a handicap being more bearable like reality mm. true I agree I agree true very very true it's like and the best example is like people who are like <laughs> enhancing themselves so much in pictures the it's like i know you're not looking like this in reality honey but yeah they're enhancing they are prosthetic they are they're using filters as a prosthetic for enhancing a reality they don't like but you can't change reality mm, yeah beautiful again another talk about fox talbot and photographers mm, okay mm. i loved this idea and i uh, i put a sign and I'll, I'll wonder about it the quote is, is something like this uh, um, the immediate intensity of life i haven't felt it in photography as it appears in painting in caravaggio vermeer velasquez rembrandt or monet um, the photography is structuring the reality it's it's actually narrowing it down. A photography in its excess, uh, it's not an excess of the world, it's an excess of photography, an excess of representation, and not an excess of the experience. Wow! So making a photography, uh, pursuing this art, is actually the opinion of this guy is that photography, it's actually uh affecting the fertile soil by making it depleted um of the of the world as an experience just because it's like cultivating the same crop in the same year on the sales on the same soil and never switching up cultures and this is like uh, this is like photography it's like it's depleting the world of genuine experience because it has transformed into a cult of the image, uh, not a cult of the experience. They are these are very two different concepts, and and I like this idea. <laughs> and you're gonna laugh about this, but it's so true. Um, hmm. uh, lips, nose, boobs, uh, <laughs> butts are being hacked to be conform uh, to a photography to pro uh, to project uh, of a very unhealthy uh, ego uh, which is hungry for his own authority captive of uh, captivity we are captive this kind of people are captive of a self um, self uh, erotism which is therapeutic wow yeah yeah, it's so, so true. It's so, so true. Mm. <laughs> and I, I was like smiling so much. He says like uh, being prosthetic for the eyes and uh, more recently for consciousness mm, and awareness, uh, the camera should be prescripted on base of a medical should be given based on a medical prescription <laughs> just like glasses because they are manifesting the existence of a uh, of a uh, dysfunctional vision of the people that uh, is uh, is working with it that's so deep that's so deep yeah a lot of people use photography as as yeah they're they're ill they're ill and they are projecting what they're not and they are yeah self uh auto erotism a therapeutic auto erotism self erotism and yeah you should get like 
get get that camera out of that person's <laughs> that person's hands they need a prescription for it because they abuse it they abuse it uh, photography which is excessive and greedy um hmm. <clears throat> it's actually against a depressive uh, against depression and frustration because nothing is in like in the picture and therefore there is this concept called photo bulimic photo bulimic photo bulimia oh my god um the need for more pictures we are living in a photo bulimic society more pictures more pictures more pictures which could cover a reality that eludes you the more pictures you make the more the reality eludes you Ooh. recent studies based on science recent studies over the visual memory have ha have shown that the more uh the higher the number of the things that we memorize the less the the more uh the precision decreases on um which we memorize it wow so the more we get exposed our we actually we let ourselves be exposed to uh images the more like oh my god we we don't even have precision in our uh, memorizing uh, process wow there is a photographic way to treat the world mm, wow this author says why is photography a sort of a blind blinding we got accustomed to see with wow, that's so deep it makes you think it makes you think why why are we accustomed with this because it's making us blind but we got used to seeing like this mm, okay beautiful beautiful mm. the photography is a foil is a foil between the given and the body between the lived and uh, the reality a foil is like a screen is like a screen uh, the photography uh, uh, it's actually trying to cover a wound an unmeasurable wound that can be found in the sublime wow the picture um, screens the time while in the time it it um it actually makes a capturing of losing that time while time passes by it puts a crust to the wound it forgets time through memorizing the moment that's so beautiful that's so beautiful mm. um the closing of this essay written by erwin kessler it really will make you wonder and uh, I feel there should be more talk about this about the ethical issues when it comes to photography when it comes to images let me tell you what I mean by saying that <sighs> he makes a comparison between two Pulitzer award awarded pictures it's about a picture created in 1993 by Kevin Carter um, who made a picture of a kid from Sudan uh, which is which was like who was dying I if you're googling that you're surely going to find it um, and there is an eagle sitting next to the child waiting for that child to die in order to eat it and it was very obvious for anybody assisting that scene that that kid if that kid would be left alone there after the camera took the picture that kid is going to die and um kevin carter took this oh i'm getting good buzz but uh kevin carter took this photo he took it but after he took it he jumped in the onu plane and he left the kid there he left the kid there yeah 
uh, the photography won the Pulitzer Award, but Kevin Carter committed suicide uh, one year later. Um, another picture awarded with uh, a Pulitzer, it's a picture uh, uh, taken by Nick Ut in uh, 1972 uh, of uh, Kim Puk, a Vietnamese uh, a little girl uh, burned by napalm. Uh, and um, he took the picture, he took the picture of the little girl, but after that he took the little girl uh, during the bombardment uh, at the hospital by saving her life. Um, yeah, where, where do you stop? Um, between the two pictures, both winning of a Pulitzer Prize, uh, between the two events and the two attitudes, there is a gap there is a gap between uh, how do you approach uh, uh, the ethical approach of a, of a person at a reality. Uh, very important, uh, very important. So this is the book. This is how uh, this essay was perfect for uh, finishing this book. Therefore, um, I do feel, I do feel uh, that photography is not uh, only about making history, making a cool image, uh, getting a lot of awards. Um, ethical issues are important. You have to live. You have to live with what you say. You have to live with what you see. You have to live with what you hear. And you have to live with what you take pictures of off and how do you behave after the camera is off behind the camera this is what we don't see and susan sontag uh really uh, shows this beautifully in this book um the things we don't see after we see are far more important than what we see um and uh it's very very important a lovely book a lovely lovely book it was not an easy reading but i i loved it it has a lot of history it has a lot of quotes it's 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 a beautiful the most exquisite philosophical approach you can have to photography beautiful i recommend you buying this <laughs> buy buy this don't don't make a picture <laughs> the next week the the book for next week a very lovely book i smiled and uh, it has helped me it has helped me and it will help me and i think it will help anybody willing uh at a certain time in life to start a family and get married and i do believe you have to prepare in advance <laughs> So this is the book, uh, it's uh, written by Zig Ziglar and it's called Courtship After Marriage, uh, Romance Can Last a Lifetime. Uh, actually it's a guide, it's a guide uh, how to be happily married, how to maintain, uh, it's not hard to be married, it's hard to be happily married. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's lovely. I found out so many things based on science, based on a lot, a lot of things on how how we look at love and how should a healthy, healthy marriage work. And I think you can never be too prepared um, for it. And it's always good to find in advance what's this marriage thing all about uh so yeah this is the next book this is the next week's book and uh yeah i i loved it it's very very good yeah thank you guys for um sitting in my stream chat uh hopefully you had a great time i definitely loved reviewing this book for you um also for me <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, see you next time. And uh, uh, in regards to painting, shipping, uh, yeah, send me a whisper or 
uh, send me a message um, because I, I told you I have no experience with shipping in the United States and I don't know how much it costs but just if you're if you're ever going to be interested just let me know in a whisper thank you very very much and have a lovely Sunday bye bye